Well, welcome back. Uh, now, I've been studying the Fourier transform, and you'll know that once you've looked at the, the analog Fourier, Fourier transform, continuous time, that is, you know there's a whole load of properties here. I've just Googled it, and here's a table that you come across with all the properties, linearity, time shift, it's time delay. You can see that you get the exponential minus g omega t bit, uh, and so on. And then you also notice time scaling. That's an interesting one, and that's what I'm looking at here. Those of you that have um, got old record decks, or I know they still have them for mixing records and so on, will know that if you play a record out at twice the speed, it sounds a bit like uh, Mickey Mouse. Um, the high frequencies, uh, the higher frequencies a car, and it doesn't really sound uh, like something that's twice the speed. Uh, and that's because here in the Fourier transform, you see, if you've got f of a t, so if a was 2, that means you're um, um, d d d taking half the time for the um, thing to occur, for the signal to occur. It means in the frequency domain, uh, the frequencies actually expand by the same amount, omega over 2. And so you get a widening of, of high frequencies. Uh, and actually the amplitude reduces by 2 as well. So f of 2t means it takes a shorter time. f of omega over 2 means it takes twice as long, uh, twice as high frequencies. So if you put a equals 2, it would take half the time to play back and the frequencies would double. You get a lot of high frequencies. And you know, if you put speech, you get this Mickey Mouse type of sound and it's not very good. So, but why would you want to do that, well maybe if you've got, uh, let's say, advertising, uh, That's that was the, when I went to a talk on this about 30 years ago, that's what the person had when they at a conference, and he wanted to fit an advert into, let's say, a minute or 30 seconds, and it went over by four seconds, and so they looked for an algorithm to do that, and so what I'm going to look here at is the phase vocoder, and the phase vocoder enables us to do that to time scale so that we don't have this high frequency business and it sounds like Mickey Mouse. Uh, now in those days 30 years ago um, still had computers but it took them I think about 12 hours to to do a, a sentence and fortunately now we can do it in real time. I'm not doing it in real time but I'm going to be using MATLAB and uh, I'm using the um, Columbia University um, vocoder you can download from um, uh, the web and uh, it's uh, just a procedure which is here pvoc which uses other procedures and it in turn is using the um, fast Fourier transform now the fast Fourier transform is the digital version of the the continuous time one and it's um, it's a special algorithm designed by Cooley and Tukey back in the 1960s so that it's faster Otherwise, it takes ages to, um, it's not very good for real time applications. Um, but that sort of, um, the, the fast Fourier transform, the FFTs, are done in very short blocks, and that's called the short term Fourier transform, and they're overlapped as well. It's a procedure for the phase vocoder. And we maintain the phase between uh, various blocks of the FFT. Each block is 1024, as in here, and we're going to double the um, to twice put the data out at twice the rate and going to try and uh, half this, this the um, the time it takes which means it should sound like Mickey Mouse initially so first of all I'll just uh, read in some music which isn't um, uh, copyright because I, I wrote it this part of it it's um, sampled at 44.1 kilohertz uh, and then once I've played it I'm going to then just play it out at twice that rate and it should sound terrible. Uh, 88.2. I'm surprised it actually took that but there, there you again I did that. And now I'm going to then I'm going to put it through the um, vocoder and we're going to listen to it again and then that should make it sound as if it's um, all the frequencies are back in the right place but it's just twice as fast. So without more ado let's read in the first file and play it. There it is. <laughs>
taken 18 times 10 to the power of 5 samples. Uh, just as I was doing that, I remembered the, some references. Uh, Flanagan uh, from Bell and, and Golden from Bell, uh, Bell Laboratories were the first to look at this in 1966. And then uh, this particular, the work itself, I think, is due to Portnov uh, in, from uh, Columbia in this uh, IEEE transactions in acoustic speech and signal processing. So if I do um, a spacebar and return here, I should now play it out at twice the rate, and it sounds like a record being played out twice the speed. So let's do that. <laughs> And obviously that's not very acceptable if you had an advert and you wanted to play it out twice as fast. Not that you'd really want to play it out twice as fast anyway, but it might be 1.5 or 1.2 or something. Now let's use the phase recorder and see how that sounds. <laughs> You can see there that the frequencies are preserved, it's just running twice as fast. Uh, looking at the time domain, you can see here that's the original one here on the left, 18 times 10 to the 5 samples. This one's 9 times 10 to the 5, so it has indeed taken half the time. And actually it's interesting to look at the amplitude, because that one's about 0.9, isn't it, that bit there? And it's gone down to about 0.5 or 0.6, so it has actually reduced in amplitude as well, according to uh, what... Um, uh, the theory tells us, but of course this is going through a recorder uh, algorithm, so it's uh, it's not just a straight um, FFT. Um, but and in any case, that's the um, really a demonstration of uh, the phase recorder. <laughs>